Take a look at this interesting reaction. When an alkene is treated with ozone, followed by some reducing agent like I've shown here, out pops two carbonyl compounds. It's just like we took a tiny pair of scissors and clipped that double bond to break the carbon-carbon double bond and stick two oxygen in to make the carbon-oxygen double bonds that you see here. We end up with two carbonyl compounds. And by the way, the carbonyl group I refer to is C double bond O. The groups I've shown as 1, 2, 3, and 4 can be hydrogens or alkyl groups or aromatic compounds. So the products are two aldehydes, two ketones, or one of each, depending on what we have there. I've shown the reducing agent as dimethyl sulfide. We often abbreviate this DMS. It's a good choice, but there are other reducing agents that work also. Does it strike you as odd that I have this video about ozonolysis that cleaves alkenes in a playlist that talks about addition reactions of alkenes? Well, that already gives you a hint about the mechanism. The first step of this reaction is addition of ozone to the alkene double bond. To understand that, let's take a quick look at ozone first. This molecule, which is made up of three oxygen atoms, has two resonance structures. Notice that in either case, we have a positive charge on the oxygen in the middle. This shifts these bonding electrons toward that oxygen with a positive charge and leaves a partial positive charge on this oxygen. That's important because the pi electrons of the alkene pi bond are attracted to that oxygen, which starts the addition reaction. So I'll write the positive charge here. Then our arrow pushing lets us envision these pi electrons forming a bond with this oxygen, which can only happen if these pi electrons leave end up on this oxygen with the positive charge. And as this happens, this other alkene carbon is becoming positively charged, which attracts the negative charge in this pair of electrons here. The initial product from this reaction is a molozonide, a compound that has this structure here. But it doesn't last long. It promptly rearranges. This bond breaks, and this bond breaks, which makes two pieces that rejoin to form a different structure. These atoms have rearranged and reconnected to form the ozonide I show on the right. We can follow this transformation by arrow pushing, but you're never going to need to, and I've simply drawn a lightning bolt with a poof of smoke. In the second step, after the reducing agent has been added, the ozonide breaks apart to form the carbonyl groups. And I have some very good news for you. There are no stereochemical implications in this reaction. Even if we have E or Z stereoisomers in the alkene, that bond is cleaved and that stereochemistry is lost. Okay, this is a simple reaction that has a complicated mechanism. Let's look at some examples. When an alkene such as the one I've shown here is treated with ozone and followed by a reducing agent, we make a ketone and an aldehyde. When a carbon atom such as the one on the left has two carbons attached to it, the product will be a ketone. When the carbon only has one alkyl group attached to it, or none, the product will be an aldehyde. In this case, we make a ketone and an aldehyde. Notice that when I draw these carbonyl products, I draw the alkyl groups with the same orientation they have in the alkene. Simply split that double bond, stick oxygens with double bonds in the same places. That way you can't go wrong when you write the structures of the products. Here's another case. This time we have a disubstituted double bond. It's cleaved to make two aldehydes. Well, it's only one, isn't it? This alkene is symmetrical, and when it's cleaved, it makes a single aldehyde. So I'm going to write this simply as a single structure. Here's another disubstituted alkene. Now when we cleave it, the double bond is in a different position, and we get two aldehydes, not one. Do you see that this would be a valuable way to distinguish between these two alkenes? The top alkene makes a single aldehyde. The bottom alkene makes two aldehydes. When we determine the structure of the two aldehydes, we can determine the structure of the alkene. What I'm saying is ozonolysis can be a valuable tool for determining the structures of organic compounds. It also can be a valuable tool for organic synthesis. When we have only one aldehyde formed as a product, this can be a good way to make that aldehyde. Conversely, when we're making a pair of products, aldehydes or ketones, this would be a poor synthetic method. And speaking of synthesis, when ozonolysis produces two products, but one of them is a small product that is easily separated, it's also a good way to make organic compounds, as I've shown here. 
A more complicated case is related to a synthesis of steroids that's well known. It turned out to be possible to make compounds like the structure I've shown here. And then ozonolysis followed by reduction made this ketone. The second carbonyl compound is a very small compound, acetone, that's soluble in water and easily removed. This turned out to be an important step in the synthesis of some steroids. And take a look at this. If the double bond is part of a ring, when you cleave the double bond to make the dicarbonyl compound, those carbonyl groups are still attached together. It's a good way to make a dialdehyde. And notice that there are one, two, three carbons separating the two alkene carbons. So there are one, two, three carbons separating the two aldehyde groups. If we used a six-membered ring, there would be four carbons separating the aldehyde groups. Now I have a question for you. What structure would we use if we wanted to make a ketoaldehyde, like I've shown here? Well, now one of the alkene carbons would need to have a methyl group attached to it, wouldn't it? These carbonyl groups are three carbons apart. So we could also use a cyclopentene, but this time it has a methyl group attached to it. This cyclic trisubstituted cyclopentene makes a ketoaldehyde. And I think you can see that if we had another methyl group here, there would be a methyl group in place of this H, and we'd be making a diketone. This has been employed in very clever ways in organic synthesis to make complicated compounds where you needed carbonyl groups that were separated by several carbon atoms, one, two, three, even four carbons. So to return to where I started, ozonolysis is an addition reaction that ends up in cleavage. You cleave the alkene double bond to make two carbonyl compounds. When the alkene is part of a ring, those carbonyl groups are still attached to each other, and we have a dicarbonyl compound as the product. Ozonolysis is widely used in organic chemistry, 